Welcome back to Great Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and if you've ever towed a travel trailer or driven a motorhome, you've seen lots of people doing lots of stupid things right in front of you, expecting you to be able to stop that heavy rig on a dime. That's where dash cams come in. And we're gonna talk this week about why you need one. So, stay tuned. I've been in the insurance claims industry for well over 30 years and people driving with dash cameras have made my life and my profession so much easier because it removes any question and any ambiguity regarding how an accident happened. Let's look at a few examples. In the clip that we showed you at the intro to this video, the other semi driver on the shoulder tried to say that he was stopped in the travel lane waiting to make a left turn. When the driver with the camera tried to pass him in the oncoming lane. How about this fine example of stunt driving? We've all had the guy who passes your RV then immediately changes lanes into your lane, squeezes in front of you and slams on the brakes just trying to get to that exit ramp a split second earlier. Having a dash cam removes any question as to the events surrounding this accident. We hope that we've convinced you that these little gems are worth their weight in gold. But which dash cam to buy? We tried several cheaper models before settling on a Garmin dash cam 57 and you get what you pay for. The cheap models struggle with high contrast lighting or night vision, and their resolution was insufficient for reading license plates. Not so with the Garmin that we've tucked right behind our mirror. In this position, you can't even see it from the passenger compartment. We found on Amazon a wiring harness that adds a USB port to our auto dimming mirror, which eliminates another unsightly cable running to our dashboard to power the camera. In this way, the second we turn our ignition key, the camera turns on and starts recording for a completely mindless experience. Just set it and forget it. Let's take this little guy down and bring it inside to discuss some of Garmin dash cam's features. Now let's spend a few moments talking about the features that we really enjoy about this Garmin Dashcam 57. It has a 1440p sensor, so it's recording video in 1440p, which is a higher resolution than, say, a 1080p television that you may have. That's an adequate resolution that in many, or if not most circumstances, you can actually zoom in and make out a license plate number. It has a 140 degree field of view. So that's going to capture pretty much the same thing as what you're going to see out of your peripheral vision. Say that you're stopped at a traffic light at an intersection, you'll be able to see traffic approaching from the left, you'll be able to see traffic approaching from the right. Garmin also makes a wider angle version of this camera called the 67W, W standing for wide angle, of course. And while that does encompass a wider field of view, it also introduces a lot of fisheye distortion that we didn't like. In addition to that, things did not appear on video to be as close as they appeared in person. Uh, because of that wide angle lens, things on the video appeared further away than they really are out in front of you. And we didn't feel that that was a really good effect. So we opted for the 57 rather than the 67W. Now, the Garmin does record onto a micro SD card, and they do, to their credit, include a 32 gigabyte micro SD card in the box with the camera. However, like most dash cameras, the larger the card, the better it is, because they record on a first in, first out basis. So as the card 
writes new video, or as the camera, excuse me, writes new video to the card, it is overwriting and deleting the oldest video on the card. So as with most dash cameras, the bigger the card, the better, because you will have more footage stored for a longer period of time on the camera. The Garmin dash cam has a built-in accelerometer, so it will automatically detect a crash and automatically save that 30-second video clip so it cannot be overwritten. However, let's say, for example, let's go back to sitting at the traffic light, and you happen to witness a collision in the intersection in front of you. It doesn't involve you, but you're a witness to what happened, and so is your camera. All you have to do is use Garmin voice command to say, OK, Garmin, save video and will automatically save that 30-second video clip in the exact same way as if you had been involved in a crash yourself. Saving video, programming, and more is available via a wireless connection to your smartphone with the free Garmin Drive app. I'd like to tell you about a few other features of the Garmin Dashcam 57 that we're not using ourselves, but it's worth telling you about. One of them is called Parking Guard. And that allows you to know if your vehicle is parked, if any other vehicle bumps it or something like that, you'll automatically get an alert on your cell phone. It also has Live View, which allows you to use that same app, the Garmin Drive app, to check in on your vehicle anytime it's parked somewhere or away from you. Now, those two features require an adapter for constant power that connects the dash cam to the OBD2 port in your vehicle. It also requires a constant Wi-Fi connection. So for those two reasons, we're not using those two features. It also has driver assist features, including a lane departure warning, a warning if you're following too closely the vehicle that's in front of you, or if you're stopped in traffic when traffic ahead of you begins to start moving again, it'll alert you so that you can start paying attention, get your nose out of your cell phone, and start rolling yourself. Uh, also, it has a, an upload, a vault, to which you can upload the video clips that are saved uh, on your dash cam. The normal free default is a 24-hour vault at Garmin's website. You can optionally purchase additional time for online cloud storage of your video clips. Finally, uh, the Garmin Drive app does come with a red light camera and a speed camera database that will alert you. And again, this is optional. You don't have to have this on, but it can alert you via the camera when you are approaching a red light camera or a speed camera. Uh, it, the default comes with it for free. If you want to keep that database updated over an extended period of time, that's an optional subscription. That's all well and good, but what about things that happen behind the driver? A dash cam can only see what's ahead or to the peripheral vision, so how do you record those events? Our Halo View system that we have on our trailer has that covered. A side view camera removed any question regarding liability for this collision. While the other driver tried to say that the trucker changed lanes, the video tells the truth. We first introduced you to our Halo View, Rear View, and Side View cameras back in 2020 in our episode 152. We'll put a link right here on the screen so you can go back to check it out. Halo View's monitor records video to its own micro SD card, so we've got all four sides of our rig covered with recording cameras as we're towing down the road. So we hope that we've been able to convince you that a dash cam is a valuable addition to your RV life. If you liked this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, you'll find the comment section. And we'd love to hear from you after each episode of Grand Adventure. Now, we air new outdoor RV adventure travel videos each and every Wednesday. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, this is the time. Go smash that little red subscribe button right down there in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every Grand Adventure. Finally, we'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next Wednesday, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.
Okay, Garmin. Save video.